Thank you, Jim. Again, a big hand for Jim. Next up, we have April. Yay! <laughs> I don't know. I don't know April's last name. It's been introduced to you as April. What is your last name? April Anonymous. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Yes, Anonymous. April Anonymous. April Who often finds herself writing her stories and poetry about all the things that she sees with the two eyes. Welcome, April. Thank you very much. Welcome, <laughs> I've written two pieces. The first one is about what the word revolution means to me. And the second is um, something that I wish someone would ask me. Oh, I feel like a movie star. Everyone's having their cameras on me. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'll begin. And this is my piece on revolution. Revolution <coughs> is the engineering of evolution when evolution goes wrong. The evolution of the hard drug scene in the downtown east side has gone horribly awry. The police and the city planners have ghettoized the hard drug problem to a small area of the city, the downtown east side. They have allowed this urban tumor to grow to the point that it is now an inoperable cancer, making the patient, the city of Vancouver, very ill. The people we have entrusted to take care of our city have thrown millions at the problem with quack cures, such as harm reduction, by others such as Stephen Harper have adopted and parroted proven failures such as the war on drugs and just say no philosophy. In my own little world, working and living in the downtown inside, I see the end result of these failed doctrines daily. Dealers making big bucks, on, pro on the prohibition of drugs, just like Al Capone did in the U.S. when booze was outlawed for a while. I see the unfortunate victims of these inane policies, the addicted, abasing themselves for their next fix, defenseless women having to prostitute themselves, or young men turning to petty crime to feed the monkey on their backs. Worst are the mentally ill left to defend themselves because it costs less to turn them loose on the streets with a welfare check instead of housing and treating them like an enlightened and caring society should, using violence to prey and the weaker members of society or being preyed upon themselves. A good example of this is what we see outside, especially right in front of the bottle depot. I see the police turn a blind eye to most of this unless directed by their superiors to do so. Also treating the unfortunate addicts like bags of trash while leaving the dealers to their business for the most part. Addicts are citizens too, our sons and our daughters. I am aware this is a huge problem with no easy solution, although some would have us believe otherwise. While I have no solutions to offer, I have one suggestion to make. A revolution of attitudes by those in charge, the politicians, the police, the justice system, and the citizens. Look at the problem from a humane point of view, not an economic point of view. Treat the addicts the way you would want your children and your loved ones to be treated, not like a bag of trash to be thrown into an alleyway to die of hypothermia. Drop the hammer on the real criminals, the dealers, while well, understand that the addicts are victims and as citizens have the compassion and to tell the powers that be to act like they are from an enlightened society, which Canada is supposed to be. Now the totalitarian banana republic, like the downtown east side, and its citizens are treated. This would be truly revolutionary. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and just something a little bit lighter. This is what I wish somebody would ask me. I work in a bar in the downtown east side. It's actually a few blocks away from here. And I'm very lucky to have everyone here, especially some from my bar. So thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Trips at my bar afterwards. Right on. I wish somebody would ask me how my day is. To me, that would be a most surprising question to ask because usually people ask me something that suits their needs and wants. I work in a bar close by here, and generally the questions people ask me are related to their drinking and their gambling. Two great vices, right? Can I drink? Can I get a drink? Can I get a pint? Can you get me a poker ticket? Can you validate my lottery slip? 
I always feel like a robot. When I work in a bar where, of course, customer service is very important, and my job is to serve the patrons, but I'm unable to, I'm unable to express myself due to the nature of some of my clientele. Actually, a lot of the people in my bar are drunk, rude, high, and sometimes really crabby. There are times I feel lost in the monotony of serving people, and it feels like being on a moving line in a factory. While I, when I do get to stop for time being, I appreciate when I'm able to write in my journal. It helps me feel normal again. A friend of mine has suggested I start a blog, and another friend might think I could write a steamy CD bestseller. During this downtime, I, I'm able to clarify my thoughts and withdraw into a cozy, comfortable environment in my mind where I can feel insulated, protected against sometimes the harsh conditions of my bar. My bar can be a very toxic, volatile, and emotionally draining place where not only do I have to serve the customers, well, that is my job, of course, serve the customers their beer and their lottery tickets, I also have to make sure that the drug dealers aren't dealing, people aren't selling stolen goods, and making sure the customers aren't fighting too much amongst themselves. Especially when tables and chairs go flying around, I try to get out of the way. <laughs> if someone were to ask me how my day was, I would be pleasantly surprised. And that's probably one of the few things besides more tips I would wish for. <laughs> well, it's true, I need money. <laughs> to, simply be, to simply be asked how my day was, I would feel more like a human being and less like a machine, standing there to serve without any feeling. I could then feel a sense of connection with my peers in the bar, rather than just to feel on the outside. So please, if you have the time, the next time you meet me, ask me how my day was, and I would probably give you better service that way. We all win. Thank you. Uh, how was your day? Thank you so much, April. I was telling you that after she read that um, last Thursday, I will never go into a bar again and not ask somebody how their day was. In fact, that night, I have to ask a question. And thank you for your revolution poem as well. Next up, we're going to have Eva Waldorf, who also has her own version of what she believes revolution should be and what um, she believes art should be as well. So welcome, Eva Waldorf. Revolution. Revolution is laughing loudly, always without censure, doing what you need to do in life, refusing to see others as anything but friends. It's following your soul calling, speaking your truth when needed, and loving who you choose. Painting. Art should follow you home, jump out when you least expect it, roll around in your mind till you can't sleep. Art should disturb your thoughts, leave you staring in space, push you out of home, wander straight, restless. Art should make you say no to tolerance of past days, let you walk the direction to face fears courageous. Thanks.